but what are you noticing the missing here of? Is it making an impact? What are you thinking? Yeah, I would say I, I am missing my heroes quite a bit. Um, the, the piece that I, I think I underestimated the most is how many of the heroes that it topped here to me that I wanted to send on the Perilous Journey uh, that are miners. And so now I feel like I actually went out and bought a miner last night because my, my mining crew was just decimated. I ha I think I have five people, and it's not even enough to do the... Two, 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 um, to, to keep them kind of moving and going. So, how about you? It's hilarious. It's the same thing. I, after we, you know, loaded them all aboard, I, I looked over. Uh, I think I had four miners. I was like, oh no, that's like, this isn't going to go well. So, luckily, I'll give a shout out to Guy Kid on our Discord. He helped. He gave me one. Uh, he sold me one of his miners at a good, at a, you know, nice fair price and helped me fill that gap. So yeah, that was definitely one of the things. And I also noticed too that I had I used to have an absolute boatload of fishers and foragers. And I feel like now I'm down to just one forager and just a couple fishers. So you know, it's, yeah, I'm noticing that those quest rewards are definitely not stacking up like they used to. No, no, they're not. Um yeah, I, I feel like already I'm I'm getting uh, you know, at that last uh couple days I, I did a little bit of stamp potting there. And I was, you know, just trying to get to as many levels as possible. And so I, I, you know, I actually brought my rune supply pretty low. And now that, like, I don't have that many heroes, it's making me kind of uncomfortable. Like, oh, gosh, when am I going to uh, rebuild this? So, um, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been weird, a little lonely. I actually sent out all of my fishers as well. Um, not, you know, intentionally, but they just happened to, to be. I think I only had five to begin with. Um, so not even a full set, but yeah, all, all the fishers are on the boat. Uh, hopefully that brings me some good luck and they don't catch a Kraken. Don't kid it. They come back with the head, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, one other thing that I should, uh, mention it's in title of the episode here, but episode 20, um, can't believe it. I think we started, I want to say December 8th is the date that I had in my head, a bit of nostalgia, you know, looking at things lately, um, I also had to reboot MetaMask on my phone. It gave me this weird error message where it's like, add a memory, and uninstall and reinstall. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll do that. Um, and I, you know, I lost all the alternate networks and I forgot how much of a pain in the butt it is to get into uh, DeFi Kingdoms. And I was searching through our text messages where you had sent me a link to uh, that yield farming uh, website where you connect your wallet and it says, all right, this is, you know, what your APRs is, how much you have staked. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, this was the first text message that I had sent to you with a picture of the old school game. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> and yeah, then was, my very first question, my very first question is what's the difference between gardens and, and the bank? Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure I'm any smarter. Um, just know a little more about DFK now. Oh, that's right. That's pretty funny. You know, it, that's actually a good point, too, because it's like, you know, sometimes we get like really deep into the, the topics here. And, and, you know, we kind of forget at times that there are people just onboarding right now, you know, new users coming in. Um, and so maybe we should try to drop some links into some of that older content, some of that intro material to help those newer listeners, you know, somewhat get up to speed. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like the idea. All right. Well, um, First on our topic of items to go through today, Perilous Journey. Uh, we, we got into a little bit of who we sent and who we have questing now. Anyone that maybe you regret sending on the Perilous Journey? You know, it, all of them and none of them at the same time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the math and realized how much jewel worth of NFTs you sent Yikes. onto a quest where they could... They could not come back and it's like oh yeah that's that's kind of scary that's a scary um, number <laughs> isn't it though you know yeah um and then you know we were talking a little bit too you know the, on the other end of it who you didn't send that you maybe regret or not regret and it's you know we we talked in the previous episode with mr zipper on some of the heroes that we were looking at their stats and going over and it's like yeah maybe some of these guys we should have sent and so they can maintain that edge um but 
you know, maybe a little bit later in the episode, we'll go through some other ideas we have for some of those heroes that stayed behind, maybe to help keep them in the loop, if you will. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth on, should I send my Dark Knight? Um, I actually have two Dark Knights that I ended up holding back because, um, according, a shout out to the uh, DFK Tavern website. Uh, they have a, a fun little battle calculator out there that I've been using. And that was kind of like my final decision on a couple of heroes is if they are super high ranked on, on battle right now, according to this, you know, random system, uh, you know, I, I decided to, to hold a couple guys back because they were in the supposedly in the 99th percentile. Um, nice. and I, I just, I, I don't know if, uh, it was the right choice or not, but it's the choice I made. And uh, we've been hanging out and, and missing our, our other <laughs> uh, compatriots together. Yeah, the, uh, the night the campfire talks at night are somewhat lonely with these heroes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, our heroes come back Wednesday, is that right? Yep, I believe that's true. Yep, the 16th. And so we got you know, just shy of a week left yet. We got, we got a good long while yet here, you know contemplate our future in the game and how you know how we're going to handle their return and the, these I, I like as you call them in our last episode the death stones or death crystals right um how are we going to burn those off are you going to spread them out or are you going to try to focus on heroes you know so there's a lot of things we've got to talk about here in the next six days i think yeah i mean let's just jump into that one right away so i you know i think i in order to maximize the value of those heroes that I was too scared to send out, you know, I, um, well, we have a, a secret alpha strategy that we're going to talk about here in a moment. Maybe we can just jump into that right after this. We're going all off script today, guys. We're yeah, all not? out of sorts, you know. Um, but, you know, I, those heroes that, you know, I was on the fence on that are already super high, um, I, I want to I wanna be leveling them right now. And every level up opportunity, I mean, you had a good reminder to me the other day, always be using stones, every level up that you have on whoever's going to be, you know, those those top heroes uh, that you imagine for PvP someday. And I, I feel like just like, you know, questing in the early days, like get started, go now because you are going to get behind if you don't. I feel like it's the same way with levels. You know, there aren't that many heroes out there that you know, are above level seven right now still. And I, I think that there's an opportunity that if someone is very diligent about their questing, that they can, you know, try to maintain any kind of edge. And, and remember, those heroes that are on the boat right now, they will get a full bar of experience. They'll level up. Um, and so use the time that you have now wisely. Um, and I actually, on, I actually haven't used a single atonement uh, stone yet. And um, I don't know if I'm, regretting that a little bit but i i chose not to because i didn't know who i was going to send on the perilous journey and so i you know i didn't want to accidentally send one of those you know precious i think i only got five uh major atonement stones um out uh and so i, I wanted to hang on to those how, how about you have you used yours so i've used i think three or four out of the eight majors i've gotten um, and yeah, unfortunately, I used one or two of them on heroes that I thought were going to be like, you know, those forever hero that you held. And then it turns out, yeah, I think two or three of them ended up on the boat. So I, I think I'm with you on that one that, you know, if I had known about the perilous journey, I probably would have held those crystals in reserve or I never really anticipated that I would have sent them on a possible death march, I guess. So, you know, it's kind of <laughs> interesting how that works out. Um, and then I, you know, I, I did, um, I had sold another a mythic hero that I had, and I had used. He just had leveled from one to two, and I had used one on him again, just with that mind of keeping those more special heroes sort mm -hmm. of on their edge. Um, but then having sold him, it's like, well, shoot, you know, oh well. But I think yeah, moving forward, I'm going to be a lot more particular about who and when I use those. And yeah, like we were talking about, if this is a hero that I want to try to push. For pvp and to get those max skills yeah never level up without some sort of crystal applied you know just give him every chance he can to have both stats or health or stamina or whatever it is possible 
Yeah, and in the chat, uh, JHW3D just said, I got rugged today so bad on my level up. Uh, got only plus two points from going from level five to six. Made me wish I had sent him on a journey. Oh, oh. I, I am feeling, we're going to pour a little out for you. Uh, that no uh, you know, that brings a tear to the eye for sure. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to hear that, man. Um, yeah, I, I haven't made any level ups since that. And I, I, I can imagine that exact feeling. Uh, so that's tough for sure. Well, let's talk about um, our our secret hidden alpha strategy. So we were texting last night, and I had actually started doing this a couple weeks ago, and then uh, toned it down a little bit as I was trying to optimize uh, my levels before the perilous journey. And it's uh, what I, I'm uh, endearingly calling um, I'm a, a recreational pot user. And uh, to clarify on that, recreational stamina potion user. And so <laughs> what, I, what I found is, you know, one of my best characters is a, a gardener. And I think this works, in my mind, best for, like, gardeners. And, you know, miners could be up there as well because of the, the time difference. Um, but the, the, the strategy is, and it, it does matter how much you potentially have um, – staked inside the gardens uh but i have enough staked in the gardens right now that every time that my best gardener goes out for a run and comes back you know every four hours or so whatever it is um he pulls in just under or around one jewel total and right now with all the airdrops um stamina pots cost one and a half jewel a couple days ago they cost two and a half jewel and so what i've been doing is buying stamina pots and using that one jewel every trip to start financing what I'm calling, you know, that recreational pot usage um, to, to keep my hero leveling up as, as fast as possible. I've actually been, you know, pretty thrilled with the results so far. Uh, and Nindorf, I think I, I got you hooked on the stamp pot uh, strategy as well. Yeah, I'm just worried that it's a it's a gateway sort of problem here. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in, you know, I'm not I'm I'm a little less gardens. I think I'm I'm about you know eight tenths of a jewel. Um, but yeah, when I woke up this morning and those airdrops hit, yeah, it was funny. I went to the marketplace just to see, and yeah, I noticed that the stamina pots were at like 1.4 jewel. And by the time I got my gardens claimed so that I could go buy some. It was already back up to like 1.8. I was like, dang, like they're going quick. So I bought, you know, I don't know, eight or 10 of them. And I've been doing it. And, and I think you're right in the sense that it works with gardeners and miners because you don't have the sense of urgency. Like it, it right. still feels like you're just playing the game. If you're doing this with fishers and foragers, it's like, how do you, when do you, you burn through that? Yeah. And with yeah, gardeners, exactly. gardeners, also the thing to remember is that's free money. I mean, that, that's the right. gardeners, that is, you are pulling from the quest fund. Um, and so that those are jewels earned. You know, if you're pulling from your mining fund, that is kind of taking away from your your potential future value of, of jewel that you might have locked away. Um, and so, I don't know, I, I've, been, I've been pretty excited about it. And especially with that, like, like you said, the recent airdrop. I mean, if you're pulling, even if you pull half a jewel... Uh, you know, one jewel uh, for for a stamina stamina pot uh, to keep your your character going through and really power leveling. Um, I I I think that's a, a really decent strategy and, and something that you know I, I hope some of our listeners can pick up on. Yeah, and I think you're right in the sense that if you're making you know even a third or a half of a jewel with a gardener, that also means that you're pulling in garden rewards by harvesting on the side too. So. Between the, the harvest rewards and the and the gardener rewards, you can basically pay for this with more or less free jewel. Right. You're not actually hitting your investment like you were talking about with the mining. Right. And that's, I mean, you know, we should all look for ways that you can find those niches in the game. Um, and, you know, of course, we have to say this is not financial advice, but, you know, I, I think all of us love the idea of, you know, not having to pay to play the game. Um, and still level up our characters, earn and earn rewards, and that doesn't even count the the general quest rewards that you get. You know the the milkweed and whatever those little spider crystals are. They they look like the alien um, 
uh, in like its first Rams form. It, yeah, it, they look like the alien in first form, don't you think? Yeah, they do. They, they creep and then me they out. Pop just, out and just slam onto your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they creep me out uh, just enough that I don't like getting them, <laughs> except when I yeah. use them to buy more stamina pots. So that's right. That's good. Yeah, and you know that's another thing too. Is I guess I did check the, um, I checked the price of stamina pots, but I I actually forgot this morning to check the price of gold. Like maybe people were swapping out their airdropped gold. Um, for jewel just to keep it in a more you know the you know to consolidate if you will um i, I heard you uh chatting on our discord earlier <laughs> you were saying you you had a quite the windfall of gold right here what, what'd, pull, you, what'd you what'd you pull pulled in quite the chad balance here uh 407 gold boy am i feeling like a rich man today so yeah i uh let's i'm gonna go ahead and look at it right now the conversion from jewel to gold so one jewel is 962 gold um okay and i i i I guess i'll be honest i have no context to (laughs) what that was so i i think this morning when i you know i want to say now i'm trying to remember i feel like i looked at it and it was down to like uh 916 so Uh, i don't know if it had the effect i thought or not I guess what I do have a reference on is I used to stamp pot a lot, and that cost two thousand gold every time. And I think that was yep. around, it was a little over two dollars a jewel, and or excuse me, two jewels per two thousand gold. And right now we're straight at uh, two jewels for two thousand gold. So it looks like it's yeah. kind of stayed relatively flat. Okay, so we've kind of got an equilibrium here going, it seems. Yeah, and then let's just while we're on stream and i'm now caught up in the air i'll uh take a look at stamina pots and see what sure. those are running for and and also too they did airdrop um some health and some uh mana potions um i think i ended up with three of each of those and i looked just to see what those prices were this morning it was like i don't know 0.17 jewel so they're they're oh. effectively they don't have usage yet so it <laughs> Those got like, sold off instantaneously. Yes, they did. Yeah, it's uh two point just under two point two jewels per stamina pot. So it's come back yeah. up a little bit uh, from where it was this morning. Uh I'm at I'm sitting at fourteen. I just went ahead and, and bought ahead on a few. Um yep. not sitting on very many jewel. Um I know so let's let's kinda transition a little bit here. I know you recently had a, a, you know, actually a, a nice windfall with selling one of your heroes, and you decided, heck, I'm going to throw that straight into the gardens. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, you know, it was kind of like one of those realizations where I, I was hero heavy. I felt as far as my total value invested in the DFK, um, and you know, just because of sometimes the hero market isn't, especially for the more expensive heroes, is not very liquid. Like you might, if you want to get decent dollar for decent jewel rather for your hero, you might have to have them listed for a while and just got to kind of find that right buyer. Right. And so I, you know, that kind of made me a little nervous as, as you know, turbulent times in the market. So I was like, you know what, I'd rather have some liquid jewel. So I, yeah, I had a, a warrior, warrior, a mythic, uh, and I, I listed him and sold him and I immediately split that into jewel one and basically put it right into the gardens. And, you know, that's helped me juice up. Like you're saying, the a the gardener returns and b just that normal daily harvest that I have available to me, and you know and maybe I do that for a week or two or a month, and just kind of collect these rewards, and I could just probably just turn around and buy another mythic, and be ahead, you know, thirty, forty, fifty jewel possibly. You know, that's one of those odd things where there's not a lot of other than questing at the moment. There's nothing you can really do with your mythics and your, you know, legendary advanced or elites yet. So it was kind of one of those decisions that I came to. And it's like, you know, there's always going to be heroes for sale. They might be a little more of a premium, but if you watch and you put out alerts with the the DFK Adventures website, you can find decent deals. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe that as well. And, you know, I mean, good for you. Um getting a chance to, you know, sell that guy. And I think that's something that, you know, is smart for everyone to keep in the back of their mind is, you know, 
and again, you know, we, we can't tell you how to play this game from a financial perspective, but, you know, something to keep in mind is, you know, are you, are you playing to earn? Are you, you know, playing for fun? And what's that going to be? And, you know, always making sure you kind of check in on your, your system. I know something that I want to do going forward is at, at some point, I, I've been a especially since we saw, you know, the recent, you know, drop in price of Jewel, I've been, you know, stay, invest, buy, buy the dip, that kind of strategy. Uh, don't, you know, take my financial advice at home. But uh, at some point here, I'm, I'm going to actually, you know, try to, you know, make my heroes a little more liquid and, you know, start start pulling that jewel out. I, you know, I have some real life obligations, uh, <coughs> student loans, uh, that I need to pay off. And, you know, I, I think that's something that, you know, we all have to keep in mind. So kudos to you for taking a flyer, testing a hero on the market, fighting that urge of, you know, that kind of, you know, uh, attachment. Um, and, and I think that was the best thing to do right before the perilous journey is say, all right, you know, if they sell for a great price, awesome otherwise sending them on the boat <laughs> and, yeah no uh, that's a yeah. great point yeah so could i see you still had a good eight euros that i sent or something like that you know so i mean i i, I feel like i was um, i took a somewhat measured approach you know i'm like i want to increase my liquid jewel i want to send some so i'm not missing out on this entire opportunity to have these awesome plus 15 skills um, but yet still, you know, still be measured and, you know, calibrated a little bit here. So I, I think that was, yeah, that, that it, it felt good, I guess, you know, do you, do you miss that hero a little bit? Sure. Yeah. But there will always be another one, right? Yeah. It feels good as a, a balance in the, uh, in the gardens for sure. And like we said, it's helping that, you know, that new stamp pot cheat code. You bet. All right. Well, we had a good uh, question on YouTube chat. Uh, I wonder if it's cheaper to buy stamina pots versus buying the ingredients to craft one. And I had done a whole bunch of analysis on this, uh, you know, uh, probably about a month ago now. And I'm I'm not at all current with this analysis, but I think so much of it depended on the last time I looked at it was the price of gold. That the price of gold made up, I want to say like 85, 90% of the total price of a stamp pot, um, being the 2000 gold for every stamp pot that you buy. And so a, a really good and, and cheap way to, to kind of figure out or approximate, you know, what, what that's going to be, check the price of gold, um, check the price of stamp pots. If they're identical, then you know, you're going to win when, when you're buying a stamp pot. Um, and that's something that I guess I, it looks to me right now with where we're at in the market that they're about even. And so my guess is, uh, we've kind of achieved an equilibrium, um, since the, the airdrops that were given out a, a couple days ago. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think, you know, maybe just to add to that to these other portions of the stamina potion, they don't have any other really use yet again. So, you know, kind of we're back to that where their right, value is actually right. probably at an extreme low because there's nothing to do with them other than hoard or sell for gold. So, like, I think that you'll start to see as more of the game comes out and maybe it comes into crafting. We've talked, we've heard them mention maybe those will require these in-game items too. Yeah. Um, or, and then those other items might have additional value that could possibly make up a larger portion of that stamina pot yeah let's let's touch on that for a second so crafting my understanding is hubert you know came out and said that you will be able to craft these uh you know we'll go back to last episode death crystals because you know despite mr zipper's best attempts to educate me you know he he failed and you know i don't i would have to say it's it's probably actually not on him it's probably he uh i failed on an interpretation and you know it anyways the 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 point that i i believe i'm understanding is that those death crystals so the stones you use to boost the uh percentage chance of a level up of a specific skill those crystals are items that you can craft in the future 
based on the 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 gardening or you know all the different profession quest quest rewards and i'm super stoked about that yeah and i feel like something that i had seen maybe it was back at dfk day or something i really felt like i saw somewhere at least um you know how like you got your game inventory and you pop open inventory and you see the little icons of all the stuff you've collected i'm pretty sure i saw one that looked like lumber or (laughs) like wood yeah. So I would not be too surprised if we see something coming out of Crystal Vale, you know, related to like logging or harvesting of wood. And that fits very well into crafting like, you know, certain types of armor or shields, perhaps, where they require wood. Or maybe it even has to do with construction of buildings on land. I don't know. I'm just going to hypothesize. I, I love where you're going. Let's go ahead and bounce into our general items category of the night. Uh, we're like I said earlier, we're all over the place. Um, but Crystal Vale trailer, you watched it, we yep. saw it. You know, obviously there's the the three new classes at the end. We'll get to that. Um, what did you think of the Crystal Vale trailer? Uh, good. I mean, I I love the 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 feel. It, it felt like a nostalgic trailer from way back when. I, you know, I I think that's what they're really nailing in my book is is it doesn't seem like it's not new and fancy and shiny in regards to the you know the feel of the game it's the technology that's new and fancy it's you know the game is still i think setting itself up to be just that really cool niche game where it's you know that eight eight bit low pixelated like i don't know i'm I'm loving it personally i love it too and I, i i don't know i thought it was really high quality really well done and you know, kind of juxtapos- the juxtaposition of you know the the text message that I referenced at the intro, where we were, I actually sent you a picture of the the in game yeah. screen of what that that used to look like, <laughs> and I was like, holy cow, look at where we've come! Like the game is so much different uh, from where it was before, and it's just like the the effort that they put into that trailer, I thought was pretty impressive. Um, you know, especially when we're in a market that's going down at best. Um, well, you know, it's, I guess it, we saw a little bit of uh, uh, Bitcoin returns. I, I think it was today and yesterday a bit. But, you know, o- overall, we're still down from where we were a couple of months ago. And uh, it just it's nice to see a team that's really dedicated and leaning into the build aspect of the game. Um, I don't know. I, I was kind of blown away by the trailer. I'm obviously a, a hardcore uh, believer in the project, in the development team, and just excited about how much they're putting into this. And then just seeing how much, you know, like Avalanche is pouring into uh, the community. I think I saw, and I shouldn't even say what the number I thought I saw was, but I, I read an article today that Avalanche is pouring, you know, uh, multi millions of dollars into. Uh, decentralized uh, finance games and you know dfk is the that the you know poster child for that so pretty exciting that and pretty cool that that's uh that's what what's going on and you know i i feel like you know something to remind our users or listeners and you know the players of the game while some of the airdrops can be a little defeating because they're you know geared towards supporting the economy system which uh in a way helps whales uh more is that we're still hopefully in the early parts of the game and so you know keep at it keep leaning in and uh the the game's going to keep getting bigger and better that's that's what i believe at least yeah i think that's a good point you know that as a play to earn you know it's just kind of the way the world works right money makes money and that's just kind of how it is um, and so the fact that, you know, it, it was clear to me that the devs kind of heard somewhat of an outcry and they they modified their airdrop plan at like last minute. I think I was scheduled to get like, I think I looked at, I was going to get like 100 gold. And by the time they ended up changing, I was like, oh, well, hey, they upgraded. It was 450 or something. I was like, cool. Oh, plus the stamp pot and some health and mana push. It's like, okay. So, you know, I did feel, I did feel good about that. I mean, that's stuff they don't have to do, you know. They don't have to give airdrops. So it, it's I think that's another thing that we need to keep in mind too. Right. Right. 
I agree with that. So let's talk speculation on the classes. Um, so I, I think Mr. Zipper, who's pretty well tapped in, um, I'll say quasi confirmed that, you know, we're going to see two basic classes and one advanced class. And those are the three that, that make up what we saw in the trailer. And, you know, everything that we've looked at in, in the data, I would say, uh, supports that as well. Um, I don't know. You want to take any wild stabs at what you're hoping to see or what you think we'll see? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you got to stick with the ice theme, right? I mean, probably not going to be an Olaf, a frozen character, you know, as I have small <laughs> kids. But I think you can kind of Jed think wants. in that same vein, right? There could be an ice harvester. Who knows, right? Um, otherwise, you know, you're thinking of things like Viking or Berserker. Or maybe you have like um, some sort of shaman, or uh, you know, those are the those are the places that my mind is going. I mean, I guess uh, it, it seems kind of basic, but uh, I mean, it could be a basic class. Uh, I said I saw I thought I saw an inventory item of wood. I mean, I guess you could have like a lumberjack, but that seems more like a profession. So hmm. I don't know. What, what about you? What are you feeling? Yeah, I think they're going to start tapping into, you know, some of the the lore elements. I think like a giant or a dwarf or something like that that is going to feel like fantasy lore style. Um I, I think I'm going to go kind of, you know, real basic ideas um and and stick to that. I uh I don't know. I'm I'm just overall excited. So, you know, one one of the things that will I'll, I'll just go ahead and segue us into the next topic here. Um, but we have a bunch of Crystal Vale Gen Zeros that are starting to come out. Um, what are your expectations for those, and how do you think they're going to impact the dynamic of the game? Because as we're talking about it, we we know there's going to be a new class that comes out. There might be a new profession that's not at all confirmed, uh, something we speculated on. Some people have been very bearish on that. Some people have been very bullish on that. Um but we know for sure we're getting new classes. Uh, how, what do you think the value of these Gen Zeros that every time they breed, they create you know that, that new class, which is going to be very rare on the market day one. How do you think that's going to impact the, the kind of the, the d- dynamic of uh, you know hero prices? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, I think the first thing to keep in mind is obviously there should be what is it, 500 new Gen Zero, so there'll be 250 of each base class, I roughly, just so that the genes work out and you don't have unbalance. Um, but then after that, I think we also have to remember it's been a while, and, and some people weren't necessarily around, but um, the beginning few summons for Gen Zeros are very cheap. It starts out at six jewel per summon, you know, and it builds up two jewel a time until it caps out at 30 jewel, right, you know, for right. half of the summon. So you're going to see some, some, there's some value in those Gen Zeros and just that simple fact. And then the other thing that I was thinking of is um, there was this huge unknown when following the, the mint of the original Gen Zeros where people didn't know about advanced classes yet. And, you know, some of the devs had hinted that there's, hey, some special things that people are going to find out. It did. It took well, a hot minute for those to get figured out. You're right. It sure did. But this time it's not going to be that way. Two new basic classes, one new advanced, basically means every time you summon, as long as you're in the same, uh, you know, amongst the Crystal Veil vale new set of Gen Zeros, if you're not summoning with your own class, you're summoning with the opposite one. And therefore, you have that chance to find it really quickly. Those so, rental prices are going to be astronomical. Well, yeah, and, and if they so, the next question then is is just locale proximity sorts of questions. If they do launch these and they become available on Crystal Vale, you know, are they going to have the bridging all worked out? Maybe you actually won't be able to send them over in and summon with other heroes for a while. Maybe you'll only be able to summon for a while with other Crystal Veil vale Gen Zeros until all that you know hero transfer stuff works well. So I think there's there's a lot of possible outcomes here. Yeah, it, it certainly has my my head spitting a bit, and I think you know hopefully for those of you who are lucky to, and I I really hope that 
And, you know, I think they're doing their best trying to create a lottery system. I think the, uh, the, you know, the denominator and the numerator, the, the numbers that you're facing when you're trying to earn these are, are truly lottery tickets. I, I'm a bit worried that, you know, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a, a real shot in the dark, but I, I hope, you know, whether it's our listeners or just random DFK users, I, I hope this gets spread out to players um, as much as possible. And I think that could happen the way that they're, you know, building the system to, you know, check, you know, um, you know, it's kind of a uh, what a, a once removal check on a random drawing where you know your your highest number of tickets, you know, if if they win, then this they're they're out of the drawing for the next hero, um, and they're giving away now. I think most of the heroes. I don't know if they're going to sell any of the heroes. Anyways, long story short, I'm hoping that goes to the people. Um, I, th- I think that'd be pretty neat, and I think that'd be a great windfall opportunity for someone who gets their hands on Gen Zero. Like you said, summoning values, super cheap at first. So I think whether you decide that you're going to pump those out and then start to sell those Gen 1s, I think that they will be super expensive on the marketplace, probably higher than miners right now, which are uh, the, the most expensive class. And, uh, you know, or if you decide to, to rent your Gen Zero out, I think you could gain a lot there as well. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think the way that it will impact the market is you'll see uh, Crystal Veil Gen Zeros go at a premium, perhaps even be worth like the value of a legendary uh, Serendale hero um, for, for some time. And, and eventually then they'll, they'll probably balance out. And, you know, maybe... Every expansion hero set will be worth slightly more. Um, but I could also see, you know, right now before combat, there are some heroes that are worth more than others. You know, you kind of see wizards, pirates, monks at the bottom of the barrel right now. And, you know, perhaps with combat coming out, they'll equalize and become you know because all heroes are all hero classes are supposedly balanced on combat um so maybe we'll see that more balanced in the future but i think what we can say probably for certain is that crystal veil crystal veil gen zeros they are going to be worth a premium at at the start yeah i agree with that i mean it's it like i said even if it's just for those cheap summons like there's real value there um and then you know we can't forget too that Sure, there's going to be one advanced class, um, but that also means that there's probably going to be one more advanced ability that's going to come out too. Mm. So right now, you know, if you look at the raw data in the API, you're able to see those advanced, you know, basic abilities one to eight can make advanced abilities one to four. So I suspect that now we're going to have advanced ability five. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to find a partner hero with advanced ability six to go up the elite chain, you know, the, until more of these expansions or as they called them in their trailer teaser here, outposts, more of these outposts as in crystal veil as an outpost, it's going to have, those aren't going to be available to make it all the way up to the elite or transcendent level until you get more kind of how that binary system works here. Yeah. And let's, let's dive into that a little more. So, Tell us about, you know, what stuck out to you. Because there's also, like, there's the the game aspects of the expansion. But then there's also, like, the underlying mechanics aspect of the expansion. Tell us a little more about, you know, in, in your research, what you found when it comes to, like, how are they making this work? And is this important? Is this different? Is it new? I, I'll be honest, you know, I read a couple links, but I, I'm very underprepared for this conversation so uh drop drop some knowledge bombs on us sure. so yeah so when i read the the medium article posted on by the DeFi kingdoms themselves about the dfk chain uh, which they're calling it which will be the essentially it is a an avalanche sub subnet which from what i'm understanding is largely just its own independent blockchain that's operated by node operators on the larger avalanche system so a lot of terminology here but basically what it comes down to is they are going to have a separate avalanche chain 
or just DFK. And that allows them to do some very interesting things. One of the most interesting things is that um, you're going to be able to spend Jewel for transactions. You know, right now we're used to, you know, don't ever accidentally, you know, swap all of your one for Jewel because then you're like, uh oh, I'm out of gas. I can't make any transactions, right? We've all done it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in this sense, send me some it's pixie going to be dust. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, I think I did that maybe once or twice for you. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's, that's huge. So now the power token of DeFi Kingdom's Jewel will be able to be used as the gas fee. So this is important for a bunch of reasons, but there's two that really jump out. A, you're providing additional utility for this power token, and B, there is a burn mechanic in transaction fees on Avalanche. So what that kind of means is you're going to get to a, you know, this is going to help. Actually, you know, we're at a max all-time cap of 500 million Jewel tokens. Well, this is actually going to start chipping away at that with every transaction, sh- you know, shrinking the pool of Jewel. So for those of you out there holding the X Jewel. That'll be another thing that should inflate the value of those X jewel or or jewel in the gardens too, or as um, as they referred to it in Crystal Vale, the ice guards, which I thought was pretty awesome. And it <laughs> yeah. makes you think of a whole bunch of things too. Yeah, I, I gosh, that's it's such a like clever and you know unique idea, and you know it. it Certainly, the idea was out there of, you know, are they going to create their own subnet? What's that mean? And how's it going to work? Clearly, this had been in the works for months. And it might have even been, like, some of the defining characteristics of why they chose the the Avalanche network, um, opposed to the, the other ne- networks that are, are speculated for their expansions. Um, and I, I think that's uh, that's pretty neat, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All yeah, right. and I think, too, one more real quick. Um, I think it's also worth noting that, you know how back in, before they released API v6, we had a lot of those RPC issues on Harmony, right, where you literally just couldn't, you just couldn't get a transaction through, right? You remember those days? Oh, yeah. So on this subnet, this DFK chain, um, they're talking of having DFK-specific RPC nodes set up. So basically, you're getting all all the other crud, if you will, of the blockchain off onto the other Avalanche subnets. And this would be specific servers that are just hosting access to blockchain data for Crystal Veil. So, I mean, in my opinion, that's fantastic. And that's going to have a huge impact on the performance of the game moving forward. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, that's some great speculation on, on Crystal Veil. I threw out a question on YouTube. Any other questions tonight on the expansion? So go ahead, send those in. Um, while we're potentially waiting on that, we're going to go ahead and jump to the next topic. So uh, the next thing, and then we're kind of all over our list tonight here, in Nindorf. Um, uh, but let's let's oh, jump good. into some dev dive. Um, you know, I, I know you've been, you know, putting some work in behind the scenes on on the website. And you have a new list of top requests that's out on our Discord channel. So the obligatory shout out to Discord. Go check that out if you haven't already. Um, we got a bunch of community members that are way smarter than me. Um, and, you know, go ahead and ask questions or put in some requests to Nindorf himself. I know you've been super active on this. Um, so what do you got in the works? Yeah, so if you there's an announcements uh, channel on our Discord page, and we you know Guy Kid helped me put together, he helped post and set up the all of our options out there. Um, feel free to read through them. It's just come kind of some things that um, have come up. You know, people have said, "Hey, this would be cool," or "What about this?" And so we've kind of accumulated. This will be our second list. I had done one. I think it was back in you know mid yeah yeah February maybe. And so I feel like now it was time. You know, let's get the next. Let's get some community feedback and see where they want the site to go next. So, you know, go go vote on that. You know, join the Discord. Vote on what you'd like to see. What we're missing. And always, you know, there's a suggestion box too. Feel free to drop more in. Um, you know, we want to make this as useful as possible because if you find it useful, so will we. Absolutely. So let's talk about one of our. You know, we we had a long term goal. We talked about this like four weeks ago. We're getting really close to it now. You're calling it the parking meter. 
and that is to replace uh, subs, and so that's how you get access to the alert system. Everything else that we're doing is not behind the paywall. The alert system is. It takes a, a lot more investment of your time, and it takes a lot more complicated access to resources, and so we're using using those uh, uh, subscription funds to, to really uh, fund that alert system. Uh, tell us more about kind of that, that parking meter and, and what your plans are there and how close are we to that? So, like you said, and then, you know, I think the other thing we've, uh, we want to mention too, is we've had some subscribers who've, who've had difficulty with anchor, right? I think you've touched oh, yeah. on that in previous podcast. And so this is kind of a lot of our method. international subscribers. I, I feel like there, there's a theme there and that's, oh, sure. that's unfortunate that anchor isn't really supporting that, that group of folks uh, the way we want. Right. So, so we want to, you know, we're moving forward. We're going to try to have um, a different system. And like I said, I, I like you, you mentioned, I refer to it as a parking meter style. So basically what we'll do, this is the plan at least, you know, give us feedback. If you think this is a terrible idea, you know, it's still kind of, I'd say about 40% of the way implemented. So I got a little ways yet, but um, basically what it is, is um, we will open it up once this releases so that anybody can create an account. The invite code system will go away so that you don't have to actually uh, message you or I right. on discord to get an invite code like you do now. Um, and you'll be able to create an account. And when you create that account, you can paste in your public wallet address. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to have the server then watching basically for you. And so then anytime after that, if you send Jewel from that wallet address to the website's address, you will be basically credited for those Jewel in a certain amount of time, which is access to the features behind the paywall. And the, the amount of time you get will be based on a formula. And we're still kind of trying to figure out some of those details, like I said, about 40% implemented. But um, that's kind of the thought that we're running here. And that way we can kind of, you know, kind of get a little bit of a, a smoother ship here, hopefully, where we're not having some users kind of left out to dry on Anchor. Right. And then it kind of helps disconnect you and I a little bit so that we can kind of reclaim some of our time yeah. as far as managing invite codes. So I think it'll I think it'll make it better for everyone long term. And, and we should clarify that it'll be a, a, a not sucky parking meter, too. So oh, yeah. I, I'm sure some of you out there have had some, you know, kind of gnarly experiences with... You know, I, I went to go eat. I put in some money in the parking meter, had to come out in the middle of my meal, put more money in the parking meter. So, you know, you can go ahead and you'll you'll be able to load up enough that will cover you for months of access at a time. And so, you know, we want this to be, you know, it, it's uh, kind of it, it's a in a way a subscription based system, uh, but also with the flexibility uh, to provide you know you with the the amount of time that ultimately that you feel uh, is is within your value system so that's why we're also calling it the parking meter but you know don't think of parking meter as in like 15 minutes 10 minutes or even days of access um you know uh, you know amounts and we're still trying to figure out what that amount of jewel is going to be uh but you know some amount of jewel will buy you months of access and we're also going to to be rolling out. I think I can say this, um, you know, some some early bird discounts, um, and also uh, some discounts to those who may be subscribed already. So you feel like you know you have an opportunity to continue on. And um, you know, we also want to give a thank you out there to to those of you who are supporting us right now. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, we're not. We want to do everything we can to make sure that people have a chance to switch over to. So there's not like a possibility of someone getting double, you know, double subscribed, if you right. will. So, yeah, right. we're trying to do this kind of slow and methodically. So, yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Well, um, I, I think the the last item that we had on the list, kind of a, you know, back by popular demand, so to speak. But something that we had a lot of fun with was hero of the day and one of the most fun episodes that i've done was the last one where we were with mr zipper and i had you guys each have your own homework assignment you went and found a, a hero under a specific set of criteria and we thought you know what the heck let's keep that going and and let's look for you know maybe a hero of the day um you know steal of the day buy of the day something that is a hero listed in the tavern and how are you going about looking for that hero so Right now, I have uh, I have the tavern open, 
and I think I remember the direction that you are going, but you know, maybe kind of lay some of the backdrop on what were you thinking about, and then we'll start to narrow down the criteria, and then eventually get to uh, the the hero that that you have identified. Right. So I think I was kind of sticking similar with the rubric we talked about with Mister Zipper. You know, let's try to find a hero that has stats uh, that are have rolled well in his level so to, so far. So that was that was kind of where I started, and I I didn't pay a whole lot of mind to profession because at the moment profession kind of has a pretty big premium attached to it, um, and so I think if you're looking for deals, a non-matching profession is probably the number one thing that if you sacrifice that, your your possibility of finding a deal goes up quite a bit. So that's kind of where I start. It's funny here. So right now I'm playing with the intelligence. And obviously I don't have my screen shared with you at the moment. Uh, Well, not obviously to our viewers, uh, but just as an FYI. So I I punched in uh, 24 intelligence into the Hero Tavern. And I'll I'll do this at a pace so you can kind of jump in, Nindorf, and and look at the tavern yourself. So if I punch in 24 intelligence, there's three heroes on the tavern right now that that have that level. If I then punch in 22 intelligence, there are 10 heroes that fit that category. And let's just say the price difference between those heroes... Uh, the cheapest hero with 22 intelligence is a summoner, common summoner, at level uh, 4 for 70 jewels. 24 intelligence, you jump up to the cheapest hero on the market is 750 jewel. That is wow. a 10x difference. That is insane. And that is a, a level uh, 6 right there. Uh, there's a level 5, uh, two level 5 summoners as well on the market so that is just absolutely wild how how different that is in 23 there are only five heroes on the market so it goes up by you know just marginally more um and so really that you know what's that mean there's only two two more um listed yeah yeah two more listed so you know if you I look at I... that 22 hero right now um there's that level four common summoner 70 your bonus if you select your bonus on level up once he gets to level five he is in that elite tier and i accidentally selected this mind you just now but um hero nine three one five eight to our listeners not financial advice go buy this son of a gun right now uh trismir kator um, I mean, that is incredible. I mean, if you get one level, you are guaranteed that you're going to get 23 intelligence just by selecting that as your primary bonus. And there is a really high stat roll chance that as a, a summoner, he gets an intelligence bonus. And let's just put that back into perspective. So let's just say, and it's a summoner monk, so decent chance at getting uh, two points to intelligence. Again, there are, oops, uh, 25. So there are, oops. Oh, maybe some heroes left the market. That's strange. Weird. Someone just bought him. Uh, no, I, I was pushing <laughs> in the wrong things. All right, so you're at 22. Right, we decided with this guy. And yep. if you get up to 24, Four. I was punching in the wrong numbers. Too many vodka waters tonight. Oops, um, there you go. If you punch in 24 intelligence, you have a level 6, a level 5, a level 5. Those are the three heroes on the market. You wow. would now be a level 5, and you bought him for 70 jewel. The other two level 5s, granted, they're, you know, the three on the market are rare, legendary, mythic, but still, those are the three heroes on the market. Um, those other heroes are going for, you know, 750, 770, and the mythic is 1800. Now, granted, that's, you know, they're being priced for the rarity as well, but, you know, you are potentially prepping yourself for combat. So I think that's, that's pretty fantastic. So, um, that I kind of took us on a tangent by just 
randomly punching an intelligence and looking at that. When you're looking at this, what numbers are you using? Are you using kind of those low twenties, or you know, what number are you yeah. punching into the system? So if you still have that up, like you said, I'm not watching your screen, but um, if you if you have that up still, punch in twenty five strength. I think you'll find something very fascinating. All right, I will punch in twenty five strength. And actually, as I'm I'm doing that here, um, I'm gonna pull up our our YouTube comments, and uh, we got. We got Max Mike who just joined, uh, one of our nice. amazing winners on uh, our, our Gen Zero uh, summon. Uh, it, you received the, uh, the the Gen One. It's it's a bit of a summon at cost giveaway that we did, and he said, "I'm selling one of those elites and a Dread Knight, and I'm thinking uh, they will be less valuable when the PJ heroes come back." Is this what you guys think also? Um. And then he said, LOL, that is my sage. Um, yeah, I, gosh, that's, I think it's going to dilute the market. I guess, what are, what are your thoughts, Nydorf? Well, I think it'll be a distinguisher, but there's a lot of different distinguishers, right? Like, uh, it'll just be one more thing that the market has to consider when buying heroes, is the way I would phrase it. So, you know, like I said, in the intro to this segment, you know, if you're looking for a deal, disregard profession. You know, in the future, another one of those is, well, if you're looking for a deal, probably disregard whether or not they survive PGA. You know, I think it's just going to be another one of those facets of the hero market that we all have to kind of keep in our mind as we're, as we're looking. Yeah, that's that's I guess that's where I'm at. So did you get uh, 25 pulled up? What do you got? All right. So I, I got it punched it right now. Click and apply. All right. There are two heroes on the market, both Dark Knights. One is a prices. uncommon 129. The other one is a Dark Knight common for 200. So, gosh, that uncommon for 129. Flipping the card over. Whoa, a, a decent fishing score, too. I mean, yeah. for Dark Knight. 25 strength. Woo. Wow. So, A, the, the one that's 129 jewels, the uncommon, is only a level 4. And the the other hero card for sale is level six. Wow! So you already so they have matching strengths, and one is two levels behind. That wow. uncommon Fisher is a steal. Dornick Apid. Well, let's hope that people go ape on Dornick Apid here. Um, so now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is bounce over to uh, the barkeep Kessing. I'm gonna look at yep. the hero hero viewer. Uh, excuse me, Hero Catalog. Whoa, my computer's glitching out on me. Okay, Hero Catalog. I'm going to jump over to the stats. So now this is looking at all the heroes possible that have 25 yep. strength. I'm going to click Apply. And that is 100 heroes exactly that have 25 wow. strength. And Well, is there pages? Go to the bottom. Double check real quick. Uh, there might be a page. I'm oh. worried you're... You're paginating here. Oh, I am. I am. You're right. So I'm afraid that there might be a bunch, but you're still 25 is still extraordinarily high for level four. Uh, Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Filter it down to level four. Yeah. Great call. Um. So 20 strength. 24. Yeah, right. Was that 25? He was actually 25. Even. Yep. 25. And then jumping over to uh, levels. So the max of level Let's four. Go. Yep, max level four. There's one. <laughs> one hero. Let me guess. All right, so, yeah, that, that guy. It's our yep. bad boy, Dornick. It is Dornick going ape. Um, all right, so then oh. if you jump up to level five, which I'm on. It then jumps up to fifty-eight, and so see, so he is ahead of his game by far. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's he's poised to make that that jump for sure. Um, yep. and, and, he's and you get know, that extra like, strength for yeah, the rarity bump. Exactly. He's gonna have well, he's a couple things going for him. Yeah, he's got the rarity bump. He's got the the bonus, and he is a a dark knight and. Uh, what's this secondary class? Dark Knight Pirate. Pirates are yep. are decent on the strength roll. 
I think right. I want to say somewhere between like the 17 and 19 yep. percent uh, roll range. So yeah, they that's, have a good roll. That's not that bad. I I think that's uh, gosh for 129. That's uh, that's worth a flyer for someone out there. Not financial advice. <laughs> Keep refreshing, hoping he's going to disappear. Uh, that's someone. Otherwise, I'm going to be too tempted to buy him here in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be a, a real uh, kick in the pants for our, our anchor listeners who, who jump into this later. <laughs> like, hey, uh, this is a really good deal, and uh, Nindarf bought it. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, this is a fun segment. we got to keep this segment going. I, I, I really enjoy looking at this market and seeing what we can chase out. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think we're, we're getting around to uh, closing time here, so... What, uh, any other, uh, viewer questions on, on YouTube? I gotta wait, I think about 30 seconds, um, for the delay to kick in. Um, so if there's any other YouTube questions out there, go ahead and drop them in right away. Um, you know, Nindorf, I guess something that you and I have been thinking about and we haven't touched on yet is, uh, what are we doing with our Gen Zeros? We talked a little bit about Gen Zeros compared to the value of Crystal Veil. We had actually been contemplating selling one of our gen zeros and i would say not because we don't believe in the game but more so because we believe there's an opportunity to cash in on jewels i think it's probably because we're we're actually more bullish on the game um you want to elaborate on that a little more yeah i I think you're right i mean i think you know there's a lot going on in the very near future with crystal veil launch whether it be you know single staking or these ice gardens that we're starting to hear about um, so it's pretty clear to me that there's a lot of utility for Jewel coming up and a lot of probably very profitable opportunity. And at the moment, with the hero market being what it is and how many heroes there are, you know, there's over 150,000 heroes now. Summoning has not been as profitable as it was when we first bought our Gen Zero. Right. Um, and so, but the Gen Zero prices have stayed, I would say, what, relatively consistent. And they you know, seem, the yeah. Price. So we are just considering basically converting one of our Gen Zeros back into Jewel in order to take advantage of some of these financial opportunities the game is providing. And, you know, who knows? Maybe in the future when, we, when these opportunities kind of balance out and all these APRs are kind of level loaded, I would say, mm-hmm. so that they're, you know, all the arbitrage has been squeezed out, basically. Um, maybe we'd consider getting another one back. Um, but you know, it's just kind of one of those things where, and, and also, I think it's important to note, too, that when we bought these two, we didn't know about matching abilities and all that. And so maybe now we would look for, we got, we did choose a, a monk and a, and a pirate to make that ninja opportunity. but And we just got lucky that the two happened to have a chance at one advanced ability. But I think if we were going to move forward, I don't know, I'm not going to speak for you, but I would think we would want to target another one for sale they would match and have two or three possible opportunities on every summon. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I do like that idea. I think, you know, what's kind of in my mind, I think first and foremost, what you started with is, you know, perhaps transforming one of these gen zeros into, into more jewel. I think there could be a drop or a dip in Serendale gen zero value when the crystal veil heroes come out. Um, and I, I think that, you know, it, it would be it we would be in a situation where we would be increasing based on our original jewel price that we purchased them at. We'd be increasing the amount of jewels in return. And if we're bullish on jewel value going up over time, which we are, then, you know, I, I think that that pays off. That's that's a, you know, what would be considered a, a you know, a smart choice. I think the one thing that um, I kind of launched out to you as a, a potential counter argument to this and why you would want to hold your gen zeros is that who knows what other kind of special value they're going to hold in the future of the game you know the perilous journey no one imagined at all by any stretch this idea of a, a questing concept come out and there is value if you have a gen zero right now you sent them on the boat and they are protecting your other heroes, and they're giving them a you know a three percent three percent protection on value. And 
you know, whether it's, you know, we've talked about map traveling, we've talked about, you know, owning land and guilds. I think that there, you know, down the road, there's the opportunity for Gen Zeros to, you know, boost combat stats or boost the effectiveness of your plot of land and your guild based on how many Gen Zeros you have or, you know, another perilous journey, which will happen probably with the next uh, voyage. And so it's this really challenging nebulous of uh, ultimately uh, forecasting what you think the value is going to be that, you know, we're kind of going through right now. and, And hopefully, you know, we're not alienating too much of our our listener base i you know i do feel very fortunate that we were able to get in when we did and get some gen zeros um but i I think you know this kind of applies this kind of concept of value applies to a lot of different hero segments in the marketplace right now yeah i I think i completely agree with what you're saying and i think the the, you know we meant you you had brought up another point we talked about is hero travel and that's something i'd kind of heard some people on our discord channel mentioning is that they were kind of you know, the, the tavern is a little slower now. Like, there's not as many fresh Gen 1s being made. Very Actually, there's very few fresh Gen 1s being made. And I, I kind of come to the realization that I think that's going to maintain once the heroes return. Not immediately, but once you have to send your heroes out across the map, I suspect that you won't be able to summon unless you're in Serendale or one of these outposts because you need a portal. That's my thought. Uh and or maybe someday down the road, maybe uh, you could build a portal on your land. So that if you're out in that far corner and it takes you know days to get there, you know it's kind of like state summoning harbor, right? And so all yeah. these things are kind of in my mind about what could be possible. And I think I think these things are going to be important moving forward. Like the hero market has exploded, but I think it's partly just because there wasn't really a whole lot else for us to do with the Gen Zeros. But they're going to be questing and they're going to be leveling and, you know, all that's going to have a huge factor moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's a, I have up on screen right now the, the cost of Gen Zeros right now. The floor is 4,600 jewels and there is a 4,600 jewel hero for level four. And then there is a, a warrior primary class warrior subclass level six going for 4700 jewels and they are a fisher subclass and i think that is heavily influencing where the price of this hero is at um boosted strength and intelligence or excuse me uh boosted agility and intelligence which isn't that great um but i think that's one that like level six like for a hundred more jewel compared to the other one that's level four you know, I, I think that's one that, you know, if you're really in the market here, you might also be able to, to, if you're in the market to buy, you might, and this would almost be a counter against selling. If you're in the market to buy, it clearly looks like levels aren't, you know, worth that much. Yeah, which is odd because, you know, that is serious time that somebody has spent leveling, right? Or maybe even in some cases put stamp pots down like we've talked about. Right. So I think, you know, those those Gen Zeros that have sat more idle, you know, that that they're behind. You know, they they're gonna have some catching up to do. So I, I I'm actually a little surprised that maybe that doesn't figure in as much. And I think, you know, as time progresses, the Gen Zeros that were maybe more abandoned I, by their profile owners, if you will. Um, they probably are going to separate themselves in price. And so that is something else that we'll have to consider. And then obviously these Crystal Veil Gen Zeros are going to be at ground zero. Like they're going to be starting from scratch. So, you know, they'll they'll be behind for a while too. And maybe that would have a cost impact. But according to what we're seeing right now, it doesn't seem like that'll fill, figure in a whole lot. Okay, so <laughs> I just looked at this guy's Hero Details card too. And damn... Um, I, I'm not trying to call this guy out on the podcast, but, uh, this hero was last sold for 10,000 jewel in November. <laughs> wow. And they're now going for, you know, 4,600 jewel. And I, I'm guessing that it was, jewel was probably around 10, 11, 12, $13 at that time period. So, you know, maybe you're looking at approximately equivalent dollar values but still a little 
just interesting. So yeah, that's that that could be a rough one, and and that's the, that's the other thing, you know, when you're holding these, like we talked about at the beginning, these these assets are expensive, and you know, you gotta you kind of gotta keep an eye on all that. You certainly do. All right, well, um, let me jump back over to to YouTube, see if we got any special questions. Um, you know, we got a couple of viewers saying, uh, I'm waiting to see if I, I win a, a Crystal Veil vale, uh, Gen Zero. I, you know, me too. I'm <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping those uh, boat raffle tickets end up uh, making a big difference here. So any uh, closing comments for you, Nindorf? Um, I think for me, it's just, you know, I think these are exciting times. We've got a lot going on right now for a game that we really still, as we've talked about, can't actually play yet so it it's I, i'm it's this moment in my mind where I'm, I'm still super excited and there's so much potential here that i you know it's, it's hard to put this stuff down sometimes so you know that's it, i just can't imagine once we're full on combat you know questing moving heroes across you know the board risk style like you know kind of setting up our army almost you know it's I don't know. This is this this game is, has got me, and I, I couldn't be more bullish. Yeah, I I love the idea of the game risk. That's that's awesome. Or for those of you who are super nerds out there, Axis and Allies, <laughs> one of my favorite, there you go. one of my favorite board games of all time. All right. Well, um, thank you uh, from us, and you know, remember to check out the Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms Discord if you're not there already. And a, a big thank you to our viewers out there. Now that I actually have a, a functioning computer, uh, we might be doing more of these live streams, uh, to be honest, uh, because I'm lazy. It's just as easy for the two of us uh, to do a live stream. Actually, no, I should take that back. It's actually easier for me to do a live stream than it is for me to to record it offline and then upload everything. So uh, thank you for those of you who have uh, shown up to hang out. And, uh, you know, best of luck to you as, as we can uh, continue on. And... Uh, Godspeed to your heroes coming back on that boat. All right. Well, uh, take care and have a great night, folks. You bet. Thanks, everyone.